Hi, I'm Brittany Trevino, and today we're going to be talking about Sleepy Hollow by Washington Irving. Uh, more specifically, we're going to be talking about how Washington Irving built upon stereotypes in the story Sleepy Hollow. So the characters that we're going to discuss are Ichabod Crane, Brom Bones, and Katrina Van Tassel. And for reference, I'm going to be using the Norton Anthology American Literature 1820 to 1865 Volume B for my page numbers and what have you. So I mentioned that we're going to be talking about stereotypes, but that also includes um, the stereotypes dealing with gender, like uh, masculinity and femininity. And before we get into that, I thought I would give you the summary of the story. So um, basically, Sleepy Hollow is set in a sleepy little town. And the main character is Ichabod Crane, and he is a school teacher. And he is a funny character <laughs> in that um, he is an advocate for justice, as is described, but his means may be a little unconventional. His uh, reasoning is a little off. Uh, he's a bit harsh on the kids, actually. Um, as a school teacher, his pay isn't that much, what's changed, and he actually doesn't own much of his own, not even a house. He uh, takes turns living at some of his students' homes, and he just rotates. He goes from one to the other, and usually the way that he chooses these is who has the most attractive sisters, so what a gentleman. Um, he, uh, the, let's see. Katrina Van Tassel catches his eye, and she's this beautiful girl, and she comes from a rich family, so not only is she beautiful, but she is going to come into a lot of money, so good traits to look in a woman, look for in a woman. His rival, however, is Brom Bones, and he very much is interested in Katrina Van Tassel, and so the stereotypes that are represented is... You know, the the typical masculine, like, muscle jock, the dainty female, and the strict and but naive educator. And as I mentioned before, gender does play a big role in how the characters are described. So the first character that we're going to look at, I think, should be Ichabod Crane, since he's kind of the main character. So... I think, it, I think it's right to mention that there have been several film adaptations. I think Frog and Toad made one. I watched that when I was little. And uh, Tim Burton made one. And that one's actually on Netflix right now. You should go check it out if you want to. Um, however, the stories are differ in some respects. Like, typically the movies, they actually want to have a ghost. And spoiler alert, in this book... There's there's not a there's not a ghost. I'm really sorry to break it to you, but um, speaking of Tim Burton's version of the film starring Johnny Depp, I found an article that was titled "Fearful Pleasures" or "I Am Twice the Man: The Regendering of Ichabod Crane," and that is by David L. G. Arnold, and it talks about the casting of Johnny Depp as Ichabod, which is kind of strange since Johnny Depp, of course, is considered very attractive. And this article actually says, this is not just me, this article, that he is a sexy man. I can't disagree with that. But the thing is that that is very unlike the Ichabod Crane that is portrayed in this book. So Ichabod Crane of the book is actually portrayed more like a crane, like a... A hunger is, is always hungry. He's always comparing things to food. Um, he's lanky, tall. He's got a weird nose. You know, just ugh. Um, but they do overlap in terms of femininity, but for different reasons. This article actually says that um, Depp is feminine in a way to make him more appealing and marriable. So it seems that he actually has a chance with um, Katrina Van Tassel, whereas Ichabod Crane in the book, yeah, not so much. He's more, uh, his portrayal of femininity is meant to show Crane as being weak and uh, gullible. And it's, it's, 
a negative towards him. Um, but uh, bo- the, the article does mention that in the book and in the movie that uh, the character is gender ambiguous. It's just there for different reasons. And also, there was another article that was really interesting talking about the gender of Ichabod um, and just the gender representation in this book. And it's called Girls Can Take Care of Themselves, Gender and Storytelling in Washington Irving's The Legend of Sleepy Hollow by Laura Plummer and Michael Nelson. And a quote that I have from that is, the feminine in Ichabod is his unmanly, superstitious, trembling, and gullible side. Now, that's a bit negative, if you ask me. So it's it's not an endearing femininity. It's Femininity is portrayed as a stereotype that is full of negativity. It's He's I mean, he's superstitious, he's gullible, he's weak-minded, and he's portrayed as weak in the body and the mind. And it's like this uh, femininity that's in him is polluting him somehow and degrading him, which is awful. But, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's a stereotype of, of women in this book. Uh, Another stereotype, we're going to look at the stereotype of, of the school teacher. So um, actually, I got really lucky, and I found a dissertation that was published in 1943 entitled A Study of School Teacher Stereotypes, and it's by Donald Carlton Bridgman, and he basically lays out the, the stereotypes of a male elementary school teacher, and he... Some of the the traits that he lists is that the school teachers are typically absent-minded, pale, confused, rather queer, and used and used to getting along with little or no money. Now, the little or no money part is quite obvious because it's quite obvious that uh, Ichabod Crane plays up that role in that he has very few possessions which he can carry around carry all of them around in a handkerchief. He does not own a home and, in fact, shares them with his students. And rather queer, yeah, we can say he's rather queer. He's definitely a a strange character. Um, As far as absent-minded, yeah, I would would say yes. He, um, I I would tie that in with him being superstitious. I think he has a, a rather a weak mind. And I have a quote. And it, um, like I said, I'm using that anthology. So on page 46, it says, um, another of his source of fearful pleasures was to pass long winter evenings with the old Dutch wives and listen to their marvelous tales of ghosts and goblins and haunted fields and haunted brooks and haunted bridges and haunted houses and particularly of the headless horseman, end quote. And as a side note, he would also, you know, repay the favor and tell them about how the world spins and how you're mostly upside down. And they're like, oh, my God. So what a gentleman. I, I, it, but this shows that he, he gives into this stuff so easily. And he himself is very interested in witchcraft. He has all these books that are super, super, super superstitious. Yeah. Yeah, that'll do. And uh, he, he's just really interested. And he lets his mind kind of form around these and be taken over. And this will actually lead to his downfall in the end since he so much wants to believe in these, and especially the Headless Horseman. And he he lets the, quote, Headless Horseman, unquote, uh, leave, re, the, 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 um, chase him out of town. So uh, weak-minded again. But also, uh, while we're talking about absent-minded, his carelessness. Uh, so he is uh, very big into uh, justice and punishment. And But the form of his punishment and his reasoning seems a bit off. So he wants justice, but his pursuit of it kind of leaves him amiss, and he doesn't quite achieve that. So in, in one instance, I, I have a quote, and once again, the page is on 44, and it says, 
Your mere puny stripling that winced at the least flourish of the rod was passed by with indulgence, but the claims of justice were satisfied by giving a double portion to some little, tough, wrong-headed, broad-skirted Dutch urchin who sulked and swelled and grew dogged and sullen beneath the birch. So basically, if he wanted to punish the kids, which it says that he was no stranger to beating them, um, but he, it says that he was very fair. However, this is very sarcastic. He would, if a, if a child was smaller or weaker than another one, um, he would not beat him as hard as he would beat the bigger kids. In fact, I think what I'm getting from this part is that he would take the punishment he, that that smaller child deserved and put it upon a bigger, um, a bigger student who could stand it. It's, it's like just as long as he gets the blood that is owed him, the pain that is owed him, that, that matches the, the deed that was wrong. And, I mean, is that justice? Is that fair? I think not. And I think that proves the, the stereotype that um, he's absent-minded. <laughs> um, so... I also want to talk about Katrina Van Tassel. And she's portrayed, the stereotype for her is that she's the classic soft female because I believe in, in reading this, I think that Washington Irving is a little misogynistic. Um, if you've noticed, no women have dialogue <laughs> for one thing. Um, but that's not a, an absolute. So let, let's look at some other stuff. Um, I found an article... Once again, I think I, I think I mentioned this earlier, but this article, Girls Can Take Care of Themselves, Gender and Storytelling in Washington Irving's The Legend of Sleepy Hollow by Laura Plummer and Michael Nelson. And it, it actually quotes a section and talks about it. And um, the, the quote that they used is um, they're talking about Ichabod. He would have... A, he would have passed a pleasant life of it in despite of the devil and all of his work if his path had not been crossed by a being that causes more perplexity to mortal man than ghosts, goblins, and the whole race of witches put together. And that was a woman, end quote. That's the section that they used, and this is their analysis of it. So, quote, um, they, uh, although this passage is supposed to be humorous, it nonetheless reveals Irving's characteristic misogyny and the male fear of disempowerment played out again and again throughout the tale. And that's on page five of, of their thing. If you want to check out that article, it's really interesting. Um, so, yeah, you, you can sense some bias that he has ag against women. So the stereotype that he's playing of is that they are subservient to men. They are, they are weaker. They are softer. Um, and they kind of lead to a downfall. <laughs> and I think, I think Katrina Van Tassel plays up to that stereotype that he's setting up for her. Um, also, uh, he, he mentions several times of Katrina being a coquette. And in case you don't know what a coquette is, I'll save you a Google search and I'll just tell you. It's basically a tease, um, however, not in a sexual way. So just it's just kind of using somebody to do you favors, not sexual favors, just favors. So a tease in that way. So the quote I have to defend that is on page 57 of the anthology. And it says, could that girl have been playing off any of her coquettish tricks? Was her encouragement of the poor pedagogue all a mere sham to secure her conquest of his rival? End quote. So it's women are tricky. They are devious. They, they suck, man. Um, misogyny. That's, that's a bit of a broad statement to make about women. But this was, uh, this was talking about... Uh, it, it, the book talks about Ichabod going and talking to Katrina, and nobody knows what happened, but he stormed out, and the author's like, oh, my God, that woman, she must have done something horrible. She must have da 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 da, -da. Ichabod is a, is a victim here, is once again playing up that stereotype of women just being, I can't think of a good word, but kind of bad, awful. 
Um, she and she is described as being very beautiful, and her father quote loved his daughter better even than his pipe end quote. And that was page fifty. Wow, how great of a daughter must she be for her father to cherish her more than he cherishes his own pipe? That that is something. <laughs> But um, other than her soft beauty, she is not spoken of very often. She may she maintains the stereotype of soft, quiet, and beautiful, and I think she serves all of these points quite well. She's uh, she described on page forty six as quote, she was blooming, she was a blooming lass of eighteen, plump as a partridge, ripe and melting, and rosy cheeked as one of her father's peaches and universally famed, not merely for her beauty, but her vast expectations, end quote. Expectations mean she's coming into money, so how great is that, having a woman that's pretty and who's useful? What more could you want? The last character I want to look at is Brom, and Brom is very notable because he is an obvious foil to Ichabod, where Ichabod is kind of on the on the feminine side, um, Brahm is very man. <laughs> and what I mean is he is just so masculine in, in so many ways. So where Ichabod is described as feminine and weak, Brahm is strong and masculine and all of those traits that go on with being masculine. Um, He's kind of like the, the classic jock stereotype. He's described on page 49 as being, quote, broad-shouldered and double-jointed with short, curly black hair, Herculean frame, and great powers of limb, end quote. So, of course, that, of course athleticism goes hand-in-hand hand with masculinity. So we've got that covered. Um, on page 49, he's again described as being, quote, uh, always ready for either a fight or a frolic, end quote. I'm not sure what they're implying by frolic, but uh, that. Um, I, you know, I kind of picture Gaston from Beauty and the Beast. If y'all have seen uh, Disney's Beauty and the Beast, Gaston. Yeah, check it out if you haven't. It's, it's pretty good. Um, <laughs> and also, as far as his max masculinity goes he's compared to a bear and a lion and even it, it's it talks about how when he decides to go after Katrina Van Tassel all the other suitors kind of back off because they're like nobody wants to fuck with a lion I'm sorry nobody wants to mess with the lion nobody wants to get mauled um but there you have it. Those are the three characters that I really wanted to talk about and their stereotypes. So to some ice, the very masculine side of things is Brom. The, well, I'd, I'd say the very feminine side is uh, Katrina, and she's dainty and weak, and Brom is solid and strong. So they're complete different opposites of the spectrum. And I would argue that while Ichabod is in between, I would say he's definitely closer to femininity. Um, and the, the stereotypes are used very strongly in the characterization of these people, characters. <laughs> but yeah, thank you for listening. I appreciate your time. Um, read the book. It's pretty good. <laughs>